Hey, I'm Robert. This video, I'm going to teach you how to make this into something like this. Let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is to go ahead and print yourself off a map. This is a map that, a starter map that I'm using with my current campaign. Just using regular printer paper. There's nothing fancy about this. It's just black ink, regular printer paper, but you're gonna mash it up anyways and, and kind of distort it. So don't worry about the, the quality of the print as long as you can make out the details of what you've got uh, for your players. Paper in a fantasy world would have been uh, probably uh, handmade, torn, imprecisely cut, all of that stuff. So um, the best way that I know to achieve that and to look make it look like it was purposefully made is to use a hard but blunted edge. A hardback book is perfect for this. I've got the Dungeons Master's Guide right here, which is convenient, but uh, any hardback book that you can get um, would work. But essentially you want something that's stiff enough that it's not gonna tear underneath and you can get a defined edge, but you want something blunted enough, not sharp enough that uh, it's going to do too precise of a job. So I want to define where my edges are. I want to go kind of basically on the uh, outskirts of the of the printed material. So that's a good spot for me right there. I'm going to lift up this corner and just tear toward this this direction. So tear, tear toward uh, yourself or, or the direction that you're going and inward toward the uh, the edge that you're using while pressing pretty firmly down on it. And that's going to prevent the paper from sliding out from under and also allow you to get the edge that you're looking for. And you just want to go along it. You don't have to tear it all in one, one go. Little short bursts like this is fine. And at the very end, what you're going to have is a, a an edge that is still straight, but it's torn. It's not so crisp and, and machined. And let's do that a few more times. You can see I have torn edges all around, which makes it a little bit, feel a little bit more handmade already. I also want to do is kind of use this negative space. There's opportunity to kind of take chunks out of the edges to, or tear things where it's not going to distort the image, but it will give some age and use to the map. You know, this is a this is a plot device, so age it how you see appropriate. You know, your your party and their background and where and when they obtain the map may influence. You know, if it if they found it in a fire, if they found it, uh, you know, in in a uh, looting a body or something like that. There may be burn marks or blood splatter on it or other things, or it just may be old and and uh, aged. So you're gonna go that direction. So for me, I know that I want this pretty worn, but not um, not completely destroyed, right? And so that's, that's what I'm going for. Worn, but still readable. All right, so I'm just gonna tear a, an edge off of this and probably do the same over here. Maybe make a rip here, you know, just to show that, oh, this this has seen some age. All right, so that's probably good enough. Um, maybe just a little piece there. There we go. So that's probably good enough. Now, this is going to get worked up even further uh, it, along in the process. So let's jump into actually weathering and wearing out the paper to make it more accurate to the scenarios your, the, your party's gonna be in. All right, one thing that you can do to make it a little bit more weathered uh, and worn is, you know, suppose they went through a fire. You know, you can imagine people are looking around this in the campfire. You just kinda burn the, the very edges of where those tears are. And that will um, not only seal in some of those edges, but kind of give a reason for maybe why why there um, there are tears out of this. Maybe it's really where something caught fire. All 
Okay. So just simple stuff like that. And you may come back after the the weathering process is done that we're gonna do and burn a little bit more, but just keep in mind, fire is dangerous. Be careful with that. Um, you know, if you're if you're a miner and living at home, just get your parents' help with it and stuff. You, you don't need to be doing this on your own. Um, I'm doing it over a sink with plenty of, you know, access to water and a, uh, a non-flammable surface under me. So that's, that's really important. All right, for this process, um, I'm gonna use watercolor. I know that there, there are multiple ways of weathering a map, a piece of paper to make it look old. Tea and coffee have historically been uh, a route uh, that I've used and, and those work fine, but I just find it much faster and have a little bit more control with watercolor. So I've got some just real cheap printing watercolors here. I've got some sketching pastels in multiple warm tones, which I'm gonna use for some finishing, some water and some brushes. It's really all you need. Afterward, we're gonna blow dry it to dry it. Um, that way it's, it's usable and ready to go. And that's the beauty of using watercolor is you can do something like that. I'm just gonna get a real cheap brush here. Get yourself a, a decent brush, a decent size brush, okay? Something that is uh, capable of covering a lot of area. What I'm gonna do is keep in mind like this has been folded up and stowed away and put in pockets and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That way those crease lines are there and uh, can be pronounced. Okay, so you just run over it with your nail, run over it with, you know, the brush, whatever you want to do to get those in place. And I'm just going to roughly fold it because, you know, whoever was doing this probably wasn't very careful with how they were folding this paper. All right. And then I'm just going to crumple it real quick a little bit just to get some other texture and wear on it. So already that has brought some life to this and th all those creases and everything are gonna stand out. So the beauty of doing something like this with watercolor on paper is that everything's gonna bleed through to the front. So you could, if you wanted to solely work on the back and have the front, it will be less pigmented, but it will be readable. Uh, because of that. I'm just gonna go through an example of that, that way you you know, um, and we'll see how it looks from there. So, I'm gonna dip my brush, and I'm just gonna be using pretty much brown and black for this. Maybe a little bit of orange, and some purple, just to get a nice muddied color, okay? and just lay it on. The, the paper will absorb it, and you want the pigment and everything to build up in the, uh, the creases. See how it's building up in the creases of the paper? That's good, that's what you want. So eventually what's gonna happen is you're, you're gonna get to a point where the paper is gonna be really fragile, and you just have to be mindful at that point what you're doing while you're doing it because the paper is going to be going to be saturated but you kind of want that because you want that bleed through you know all right let's take a look at the other side see what that looks like okay so you see we have some bleed through not a ton but it's still readable and so you could theoretically just kind of leave it there you could go come back and like with a very very much lighter and less pigmented wash uh, go over this or you could do the same treatment as the back. Now what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and do a less pigmented wash. So I'm gonna really water this down and see if I can come at this. There we go. Re-up some pigment and some water. Really water it down. Really water it down. So we've got that kind of tinted on the front end and I can come back and do the edges and I think I will just kind of hit these edges with a little bit more of a pigmented heavily pigmented uh, wash here that way it brings some like dirt and grime effect a little bit to this and it can settle in these uh, 
these folds and creases that we've got here. And then what I'm gonna do is get some of this black and just allow that to kind of settle in to some of these creases and folds we've got. So this is re much, much darker, okay? I just mixed black and brown here and um, it's not heavily uh, uh, desaturated with water and that's because I want there to be some grime on this, the sense of, oh, this is, this has been through some stuff, right? Another thing you can do is just like splatter, which works, and I'm gonna do that. You saw how I did that. You just hit hit the hit the brush against your finger and you know aim it. But that's probably all I'm gonna do to this front side. The rest is gonna be on the back and kind of bled through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to a different room and lay it on a paper towel. Uh, you could you could just let it dry and let it lay on a paper towel and dry, but I'm gonna take it and, and blow dry it. That way I can continue working on the back. What I would recommend doing is letting it dry and then coming back a second time after it's dried, because that's gonna loosen up the fibers of the paper. And when you do that, it's gonna give the sense that like this paper has seen a lot of, a lot of life. All right, so I'm gonna take this and, and dry it and I'll be right back. All right, I am back. You see, it's pretty dry. Um, you see the back here is very heavily pigmented. You can see the lines of the folds and kind of where uh, the pigment settled into some of the creases and cracks and everything, along with the tears. It's a little bit more prominent on the tears on the front end because it's where I use the black. So I'm gonna come back with some black and this step is going to really define these creases and folds here. So first, I'm gonna crump it up again, very lightly, being sure not to tear anything unless that's what I'm going for. I did a map earlier that is very torn and weathered. So if that's something that you're going for, then great. Then I'm gonna fold it roughly along the same lines that are established, but a little off that way there's an illusion that this, you know, this has been through multiple hands or been quickly put away at one point. You know, some of these are being left dog-eared, which is great. Um, gives a little bit more character to it. I'm gonna start off with it folded up, okay? And then I'm gonna kind of work backwards as, as it opens up a little bit more, going in with the darker pigments, okay? So I've, got, I've still got my brown and black mix going here, and I'm just gonna hit the edges, the edges of these creases, okay? I'll go in with my lighter pigment here and just even that out. Then I'm gonna open it up, kind of do the same thing, all right? Bring in this darker, hit the edges. These that wanna be dog-eared, let them be dog-eared. And then just come back with some water and even that out. Okay, so you see I've got the back, done, front, and then open it up. Do the same thing, edges, hit these creases and folds. Don't be afraid of the pigment here. You're just hitting it lightly, making sure it can get saturated into all of the folds and tears and everything. And then you're gonna come back and line that up with some water, feather it out. And then of course, if you want to, you can add some splatter. there we go. That's that. I'm just going to add a little bit here. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and dry this again. And so here's a couple options. You can fold it up, very lightly fold it up, leave it like that to dry. What that'll do is it'll dry the fibers of the paper in place like that. Or you can go ahead and lay it out in, in, let it air dry or go blow dry it to make sure that you have this the way that you want it. I don't mind for play purposes that this is this is very, very um, less weathered than the back. I, I would imagine that, you know, the back of whatever stone or table or anything that, that the people using this would be laying this on would stain it over time. 
and then you know they would just fold it up and and go on their way but you know you may want that to be just as pigmented just as weathered as as the front so or, or as the back so um you know you can definitely do that one thing that you could do and which i'll do right now just to show it is um you know after you dry it and stuff i'm going to try to do this a little bit wet that way it sticks um is to take a pastel a uh, warm pastel like uh like this this is just a, a brown and um, lightly hit the highlights, the, the tops of these ridges. Okay, it's not gonna do it while it's, while it's wet. Let me go ahead and dry this and then I'll give you an example of that. Okay, so I'm back. This is dried and so I'm gonna just gonna crumple it up a little bit. Get some of those creases in there. You have to be careful at this point. It's been through multiple dry cycles, you know, wet and dry. So it does get fragile. So just be mindful of that at this point. But if you come back, you can hit some of those tops, you know, tops of the creases, and it just kind of brings out the texture in in the paper a bit. Okay, you can do the same on the back. See what that looks like. There you go. So it took it from, you know, kind of being very flat and plain and, and just pigment on the paper to having these little details on those ridges. And that, while like it can wipe off and stuff, you can seal it if you want to, if you have some sort of art sealer, if you want to hit it with hairspray or something like that. Um, just make sure that if you do hit it with hairspray or anything aerosol like that, you're not going to burn this further. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come back and hit this a little bit more with a with a lighter uh, to burn some of the edges a little bit more crisp, and I'll show you that. I'm probably gonna burn through probably this this corner. All right, be very careful with the lighter, but I'm gonna burn through this corner here, just very lightly. To where there's a flame. Blow it out. So that's gonna create a burn mark, see? Burns through. It's very little that is needed, but it can make a big hole. So just be careful on how much you do that. <laughs> do it a little bit on this edge too. Man, it's been a long time since I've done a tutorial. I hope you find that helpful. Thanks for watching. You know, leave a comment in the in the section below if you have any suggestions on how to improve this process or if you do it a different way. Uh, I'd love to hear it. I'm always looking to improve my my skills and my processes and stuff. If you end up doing this for a campaign that you're running, I'd love to hear about it, how it went over, how your players reacted, and, and what that experience was like for you. In the meantime, uh, if you like content like this, please subscribe. This is what I do. Art stuff, pottery, painting, woodworking, all sorts of creative endeavors that me and my wife work on, sometimes together, most of the time separately, because uh, we only we have our own interests. So uh, if you like that, please uh, subscribe. If you, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It goes a long way, but I'll see you next time.